Hello everyone and welcome back into my weekly Kerbal Space Program tutorial videos. We're going to take a break from doing our mission mode and show you guys some basics about the nav ball. I know some people have been having some questions in my stream. Someone came by the other day and told me that they were having an issue, that they were launching a rocket and it was slipping upside down. So we're going to make a couple of examples here and show you the do's and don'ts about nav balls and control points and why they're important in Kerbal Space Program. We're going to put together just a small vessel to kind of give you an idea about how things work. The main issue people have is with probe but you can also have that issue with with command pods as well and we're going to show both the do's and don'ts and how they get turned around before you launch real quick we're going to make a vessel here i'm going to throw a fuel tank on here and, and put a couple of control points on it just to give you an idea of how it would look out onto the pad and how it would behave we're going to make something that can take off here on the pad and show you the importance of the nav ball and how it works for the most part first up we're going to put a regular pod the command the mk1 command pod that you usually get at the very beginning of the game in career mode we're going to put a pilot in here and we're gonna launch it out. Here we have your ship and how it should look and how your nav ball should behave. If you're sitting on the pad about ready to take off, the nav ball default of a proper orientation looks just like this. The numbers on the nav ball are degree headings and they follow the planet as its shape. So at this point, we are facing up, we are equatorial, and we can go towards the 90, which puts us in an equatorial orbit. 270 puts us equatorial. And then 180 and zero puts us into a polar orbit. Then of course, these also go around. So you can visualize taking these lines and wrapping them completely around a globe. And that's how you get your orbit that you're trying to achieve. We're gonna recover real quick. We're gonna put some things on this to kind of move it around to give you an idea of where you would lean if you were to try to make a big maneuvers with this. Out here's proper orientation. Once again, we have RCS on top because I wanna show you what the buttons do in accordance to the nav ball. So if you wanna move your ship towards the 90 degree using the WASD keys, this is for computer PC, you hit the D key to go the, towards the 90 degrees. Uh, we'll turn the RCS on and you can see that RCS thruster is burning to point us towards that 90 degree. If I want to go 270, I hit the A key, takes us towards 270. If I want to go up or down towards zero, I press S. And if I want to go up towards the top, I press W. Any combination of those will allow you to move in different areas. And you can use that as an idea of where your control is going to be. This is where things get crazy. We're going to go back to the VAB and make one change. And I'll show you what this does to the ship. I'm going to take this vessel and we're going to spin it 90 degrees and then relaunch it. Now what this does is it completely changes the nav ball. This is where players start to get confused because you'll accidentally turn something and now look at our nav ball. So now if we hit D, it's still taking us towards the 90 degree but the 90 degree in this instance is gonna take us into a polar orbit. If we hit W, that usually gets us to the polar orbit heading in this direction. It's now gonna take us into towards the 180, which our vessel is turned at. So that completely changes the vessel. If you land like this, it's gonna be affected in the same way, which is why it's important to get used to turning your camera, getting your, your vehicle oriented the right way. That way you can read how you're gonna burn yourself. So this is D. This is gonna point us towards the 90 degree of this capsule, but it's not gonna get us into an equatorial orbit. It's gonna get us into a polar orbit. I'll show you another example of what goes wrong sometimes with people when they're building a rocket. So we're gonna, we're gonna turn this back And then I'm gonna take this piece and we're gonna flip it upside down. Take the RCS, I'll move it to the top. This on the bottom. Make sure there's a pilot inside and launch it. This is another thing that gets people into trouble because now when we load out, the nav ball is gonna be upside down. And if we hit D to go to, towards the 90 degrees, it has us going backwards because it's flipped. It's flipped 180 degrees. So everything is backwards. So A is going to take us towards our proper orbit trajectory, which is 90. D is going to go 270. If you tried to launch like this, you'll end up crashing sometimes because the rocket turns upside down like that and blows up. Now that also could be due to a high TWR. Um, Let's revert to launch and try that in a different way. Let me, let me not launch it so heavily. See what happens there? The rocket tries to overcompensate and runs you into the ground. 
Now you're gonna say, that could be because of the rocket and the power that we were thrusting at, but we can, we can debunk that by switching this around, putting this back on, and launching it again. Give it a little bit of throttle, turn on the SAS. See how it doesn't flip over? That is because you're oriented the right way. Now you can right click this and say reverse, and it'll make the ship flip over if you're not careful because the rocket tries to compensate. You don't want to do that. That is a perfect segue into the next part that I wanted to explain. Let's say for instance, this was a ride share and we had multiple pieces on this ship. And let's say for some crazy reason, we wanted to mount some really small satellites on this for, for other missions that we're doing. So we're gonna grab these, we're gonna grab a few decouplers that are small. And we're gonna build, let's just pretend like these are little relay satellites, but we're just gonna put probes on here just to prove a point. And I launch. There's three control points on this rocket. If you're not careful, you can screw yourself up. Depending on how you built your rocket, if you accidentally were controlling from here, all of a sudden your nav ball looks completely different. Some people may not see that and just think that they're okay, launch the rocket, and you're gonna end up turning sideways the minute you try to make a maneuver. You say, okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to go 90 degrees. And you press the button, now you see you're rotating. It makes the rocket weird. It doesn't control very well. We're gonna revert back to launch. We'll try a different one. If you come out to the pad, always double check that your orientation is correct for the vessel that you're flying. There is, usually if this is turned the other way around, this is, this is a rover orientation. And we can show you that in this video as well. But if you notice that you're not seeing completely blue, there's something wrong with your rocket. The way to remedy that is to right click on your main control and choose control from here and it fixes it. Make sure you're orientated properly, that your 90 degrees is to the right and then you should be able to launch without any issue. Oh, I, that was a staging error. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen that way. Now the other control services are gone completely so we have no, we have no other way but to fly this way. And let's go. That wasn't supposed to happen but I'll leave it in because it's hilarious. And you can see the RCS acting upon the ship and turning us in the direction that we want to go. Let's go over to the space plane hangar and I'll show you another instance how you can get confused with it. They have a butterfly rover right here. Now this has a control point that exists here. We're going to put another one on here just to kind of show the difference and what to look out for. If you happen to be going around in space and you might have an issue with how it's orientated. Double check, there's a pilot in here. We're going to hit launch. Rovers are supposed to look at the horizon because the wheels are supposed to be pointing down towards the brown and your vessel is supposed to be sitting up towards the sky. So the wheels facing down is a good thing. It allows you to drive and turn along the equator which is the surface of whatever body that you're on. So this is orientated properly. If we were to accidentally control from here, all of a sudden everything's mixed up. You can still kind of drive, but if you have control, control wheels on here and SAS, your vehicle's gonna behave uh, suboptimally. Our turning isn't as, as great, and we won't be able to save ourselves from a rollover as easily if we were controlling from the proper location. You can also change this if you want to change it backwards. You can control in reverse, but you really don't want to do that. And this also goes up and, and goes up as well. Orientation is important. That way your vessels move exactly how they're supposed to. Proper orientation on your vessel is important in order to drive around safely and securely whatever body that you happen to be existing on. This is a pre-built rover. You can access it in the Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program. It's actually really interesting. We just drifted there. We couldn't, we wouldn't be able to drive like this if we were pointing up, for example. Well, that's reversed. That's even crazier. So the control point is up. I mean, we're still able to drive a little bit, but it's, it, it's a lot bulkier. Of course, your mileage may vary. Give it a shot and see what works better for you. Okay. Let's go back to launching rockets. You, you understand how the rover works. Let's go back to launching rockets. Building ships in the VAB is important because you wanna make sure that when you put things together, if you use the reroute button on your ship, that you don't do it on the wrong piece because it could cause an issue. For instance, let's build a quick little ship that's gonna be flying around in space. It's gonna to connect to another ship that's docking to out in space. We're gonna reroute to the docking port in order to move this pod around. We flip it around 
and then we end up building the rest of our ship with a second stage underneath. If you're not careful, and you piece everything together like this without paying attention, what we've essentially just done is we've, re we've reversed the angle of the control of the ship without trying to. So if we were to put a pilot in this and then fly it without making any adjustments, this is how it would look on the pad. And this is dangerous because once we load onto the pad, we're gonna have an orange nav ball. Orange nav ball is not good because that means when we launch the rocket, it's gonna spin upside down and you're gonna blow up. And you're gonna say, oh my goodness, why did I blow up? I built this ship perfectly. It's supposed to look amazing. And that's a dead Kerbal. My advice to you is, once you get done building a ship, and I forget to do this too, so don't think I'm, I'm telling you because I know all, go to your reroute and reroute to your new default control. If you do that and you go to launch it, it will fix it on the pad immediately. Transversely, we can fix it on the pad ourselves. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. See how it launches with no issues? No flips, no falls, no fails. We can make it flip ourselves. It's actually really hard to do so without messing it up. Let's go back and pretend like we didn't reroute it back to that control surface. We could reroute it back to this one here. Let's say we want this to be the main point of control, whether we're connected to a mothership or not. That way you always know the pod that the pilot is in. Come here onto the pad and control from here. It'll change the nav ball and you'll be good to go. Later on in space, you can control from here and you can have control of the vessel. You can also reverse it, but the same thing's gonna happen as before. The 90 and the 270 gets flipped. So when you go to launch your rocket and you wanna press the D key to turn equatorial, you're gonna end up going retrograde. So you have to use A instead. It reverses the, the left and right on your rocket. It looks like you're going the opposite direction. It's gonna make you panic for just a minute. But you should be able to fly the rocket without much issue. Therefore, you can still maintain control from here. And this doesn't uh, cause any loss in maneuver nodes when you're out in space. The reason why having the nav ball at the default is so important when you're on any celestial body is because you want to make sure that you can get back into the same orbit and repeat it over and over and over again for consistency's sake. That way you can start building space stations, refuelers, and having rendezvous that are successful because everything's going to be going around the body in the same area. Make it a habit. Have your 90 degrees to your right. Use your keys. Fly appropriately. Make your rendezvous happen. Enjoy your space stations. And double check yourself on the pad. I'm guilty of it too. Double check yourself on the pad before you launch every time to make sure that you have a bright blue nav ball in front of your face for proper liftoff of your rockets. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me questions in the comments. Like and subscribe for more content and you can catch my live stream Friday to Tuesday on twitch.tv forward slash Taradra. Information in the description. Thank you guys for watching once again and I'll see you guys next time. Good night.